Don't forget to go to ashkicking.com for pound for pound the best home health and beauty fragrance products. Who's you stupid fool? Did you really think you were hitting me? Huh? Bam, bam, bam! Over. Hi there, Facebook. I'm worn out. I'm almost as worn out as Conor McGregor was in rounds 9 and 10. I'm trying to process all that I saw, but my initial biggest takeaway is Conor McGregor just put up a hell of a fight. I think he gave Floyd a lot more than Floyd thought that he was going to get. I think Floyd was in trouble on the scorecard number one for a while. And the turning point of that fight was, and I'd still like to hear a little more about it, because Connor was talking to Robert Byrd, the ref, about it, arguing about it after it was over. The whole thing flipped and turned in round number nine. And ironically, Shannon Sharp my debate partner on Undisputed, 9.30 to noon Eastern Time on Fox Sports 1, and I cannot wait until Monday. We're also going to have Shane Mosley on. I can't wait for that. Shane said that Floyd would be laughing the whole fight and toying with him. He, he didn't toy with him, Shane, and all you boxing aficionados and ex-boxers. Floyd Mayweather was in trouble several times in this fight, but the turning point to me and I would like to see the video of this, came in round nine. Ironically, the, the, the round that Shannon Sharp had predicted a knockout for Floyd and the round I predicted a knockout for Connor. And right away, Connor coming off his best round of the fight, a bounce back round in round eight, to actually put on my card, I had him ahead. If you put it, uh, 10, 10 point must, so it's 10 to 9, 10 to 9, but I had him around ahead of Floyd at this point with the bounce back in 8, and then in 9, he comes right out aggressively to Conor McGregor, and he, he stung Floyd, he, he hit him with a hard left, rocked him, buckled him, and, and Floyd's in trouble in the corner, and Conor tries to go in for the quote-unquote kill, and it happened so fast. I need to see a replay, but you Connor fans know what I'm talking about. I, he had him, and Robert Byrd pulls him away and saves Floyd, and to Floyd's credit, listen, I got to give it up to Floyd. Floyd can take punches because he took a, a bunch of punishment in that fight, both body and face shots. A lot of jabs, a few hard lefts from Conor McGregor, and he kept on keeping on. And yet, in that moment, I thought, that's it. I, again, I'm just going off my, there's no replay of it, so I'm, I'm going off my, my instinct, my gut initial reaction was, I'm coming up out of my chair because I thought Connor had him, so to speak, on the ropes. And then Connor was forced to back off into the middle of the ring, and it's like he had spent himself on that salvo. Because eight took a lot out of Conor McGregor. Again, in the end, he just tired out, wore out, gave out. Legs went because obviously in MMA and UFC, it's three five-minute rounds. And, and this is, you, you know, you're going into unknown territory. You're breaking new ground because even though he went with Pauly Malignaggi in, in a sparring session for 12 rounds, he didn't go all out. There wasn't this kind of monumental global pressure on him, and he wasn't ready for the duration of it. And so he took his shot to end it early in round nine, and, and he got pulled off. And I swear, Robert Byrd saved the fight. He saved it. Robert Byrd, I respect the heck out of him, but a longtime Las Vegas referee, highly respected, but 
I think he gave Floyd a big break in that fight that he did not deserve. If if Connor, because again, there were those little chop punches that that are illegal, but it's it's part of the MMA repertoire and obviously legal in MMA. But but Connor was a little unsure about how to finish him in the corner, but but he was on his way, and it was his last hurrah. It was all he had left cardiovascular-wise and leg-wise. His legs are getting wobbly, not from taking punches, just from wearing out. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of heat. He, he was sweating before the fight, which bothered me a little bit. It's, it's like he wasn't hydrated well enough. This is virgin territory for him. He wasn't ready for what was about to happen. So he spins himself over in the corner, and it doesn't get finished. Whatever needed to be finished early in round nine didn't get finished. And all of a sudden, they start fresh. And to Floyd's credit, he sucked it up, and he bounced back. And then he went on the attack, and he sensed right away Connor didn't have any legs. And he caught him with a couple of shots. And Connor was already wobbling, but as Connor said after the fight, he's wobbling because he's just out of gas, man. It, it's not. Then he, he caught a couple of punches late in round nine, and he kind of hung on to him and had to dance with him a little bit. But then I'm thinking, okay, so bounce back, and here you go again. And in round 10, it was clear from the start, he was done. He was shot. Legs were shot. It wasn't like he was getting rocked, but then later in round 10, Floyd got him with a couple of, of like lunging right hands, and it, it didn't, didn't really hurt him. He did have a, a little mouse under his, it would be his left eye, but no cuts, and he was upset it got stopped, and I was too. I immediately tweeted. I just wanted to see him have a shot to see if he could suck it up and reach down because he's a brawler, man, and he was just fine when the fight was over. It wasn't like he was wobbly or punch drunk or whatever. He was fine, and it would have been interesting if he could have hung on just for the end of that round, which would have been the 10th round, Again, I had it five all, and I'm giving Floyd obviously the tenth round as as well as the ninth. That tied it up to me, and then it's like, who's got the most guts? Eleven and twelve. The odds are be, be heavily with Floyd, but this guy, this guy's something. It's Conor McGregor, and if he could have reached down and regrouped and found one more new picture to paint for Floyd, and and mustered up just one more big left and caught him. Because he can box, man. Conor McGregor can flat out box. Floyd was having a hard time with him. But I got to credit Floyd Jr. and Floyd Sr. for their strategy because it paid off and it was correct. And I tweeted this early on. It was the classic rope-a-dope strategy that we saw Lee use on uh, George Foreman in, in um, Zaire, obviously, in the Rumble in the Jungle. And the idea is, in this case, obviously George Foreman is much bigger than Ali. In fact, Ali's camp, as you, for you longtime boxing fans know, that they thought Ali was going to get killed that night, like literally killed by the bigger, stronger Foreman who had just clocked Joe Frazier before Ali. And so Ali decided, I'll rope-a-dope him. I'll just hang on the ropes, and that's what Floyd did in rounds really one through three and then some in four. They all started off with rope-a-dope where Connor went over and hammered on him. And he won. I, I had him win in all four rounds of the boxing judges. I, I told you before the fight, the boxing judges are going to give the, the MMA guy no breaks, no credit, no nothing. So obviously the boxing judges had it, a couple of them wildly in favor of Floyd. But the Showtime score, I'm not, forgive me, I don't know his name, not familiar with him, but the Showtime guy had it even. And, and again, I had it five rounds to five rounds through 10, but obviously it got stopped near the end of round 10. So congratulations, Floyd Mayweather. And I was wrong about my prediction of Connor by knockout in round nine. But there was that flashpoint moment when I'm thinking, my God, he's got it. He came right out in round nine after winning eight. And there's one shot where he gets him good. And it stung Floyd and it buckled him and he's bent and if Connor had more boxing experience and had more legs, it's highly possible 
I think he could have finished him off right there. But he didn't. Floyd was given a reprieve by the referee, Robert Byrd. And to Floyd's undying credit, 15-0 credit, he fired back. And to his credit, the rope-a-dope did seem to work because it's like George Foreman is just wailing away on Ali's midsection. And Ali kept asking him, is that all you got? Is that all you got? Well, that was all he got because obviously he, George Foreman punched himself out and in, effectively, though it took a while longer, so did Conor McGregor. All those body shots, some of those face shots, all that jabbing, it took its toll. But for four rounds, you could see Conor McGregor could just flat out box because Floyd was trying to, you know, mid-round, late round, he tried to come after him. How many did Floyd throw? How many punches did he throw that missed? I thought Floyd had the greatest head in boxing, but, but I got to tell you, Conor McGregor was ducking punches beautifully. The man can box. And he, he was so long through the first four rounds, certainly, but really five. I mean, it was, a, it was a fight, man. It was a contest where Conor was so long that he could just hold Floyd off. Floyd's little. Hold him off with the right hand, then paint different pictures, quick stance changes, right, left, right, left. And he'd, he'd nail him with the right, with the jab, and then when Floyd would throw those wild haymakers, he'd counterpunch with the left. He's winning the fight. It was, it was a beautiful thing to watch. He was out boxing for a while, the greatest boxer ever, as far as technical boxing goes. Certainly the greatest defensive fighter. But to Floyd's credit, he knew to win this fight, he couldn't run from this guy. He was going to have to, as they say, come forward, come straight ahead. And starting in round five, he started to come forward, more than six, more than seven. And it looked like he was starting to take control. But the, the round of the night for me was round eight when, let me make sure I got my, because I took my notes here. Well, I didn't. Can't even see my Twitter. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got my rounds right, but I'm processing quickly here. Round eight was the best round of the night as far as Connor looking like he was in trouble and then reasserting himself and regaining momentum in the fight. That was the best round of the night was eight where, where McGregor just took it to Floyd and he was stinging him. He was outboxing him. It, it, was, it was something to watch, which led to round nine. And I'm thinking... My God, what many people were calling, you know, this would be the greatest upset in sports history, this joke, this farce, it had turned into a hellacious boxing match, a real contest. Dana White kept saying, well, his only chance is to turn this into a fight, like more of a brawl. I, I think he was not out boxing Floyd, but he was... He's holding his own with Floyd Mayweather Jr. I thought he acquitted himself beautifully. And Connor was happy afterward, but, but he, was, he t had issue with Robert Byrd. He took it right to him in the ring. And, and what did Connor say afterwards? He's not that quick, Floyd. Doesn't hit that hard, meaning Floyd. But the thing got stopped. And Connor said, well, why did you stop it? My, my legs, I was, he admitted. He said it was just fatigue. So let him be fatigued. He, he, got, he got hit two or three times. Again, Floyd is not a big puncher. I don't care what anybody said. Shane Mosley, a proud boxer. We'll have him on Monday on Undisputed. Please join us. It's going to be hot and heavy all day on Monday, 9.30 noon Eastern time. But Shane Mosley just thought this fight was a joke and a farce, and it would be over quickly, as did Paulie Malignaggi. And... Shane's proud that he hung in, you know, and he rocked Floyd once for sure, but it was a a 12-round fight. Shane's proud of that. I, I get that, but you, you got to give this man some credit, Conor McGregor, to step out of MMA straight into the boxing ring with the world watching, breaking all pay-per-view and betting and, and arena ticket sales records as far as, it looked full to me, I don't know, everybody was saying the tickets weren't selling, but remember, they were 
outrageously priced. They easily broke the record for revenue, you know, ticket revenue. So, so there's a lot of pressure on this guy also to step into the ring with a 49 and 0 boxer. Wow. But Floyd showed a little age tonight, as I thought he would. He's 40 and a half years of age, and he hasn't been in a real battle since the second Maidana fight. And he said he owed fans, you know, after the Pacquiao fight. Pacquiao fought with a torn rotator cuff. It was a joke. That was a joke and a, full, a farce. And obviously Floyd won that one just ducking and running for most of the night. And it went to the judges, and he won, as usual, pretty convincingly. But in this case, I am proud of Conor McGregor, man. I'm proud of him. I mean, he, he had the fight in his hands, and it just became a, a matter of fatigue. You just have to have the legs to go 12 rounds with this guy because to Floyd's credit, he had the legs and he had the heart. He had the guts. He had the chin. He had, the, he had all the qualities it takes to last 12 rounds. And obviously, I said a thousand times, if it goes to the boxing judges, they're, they're just going to say it's a wipeout in favor of Mayweather. And if we were heading in that direction until round eight when Connor said, I'm going to suck this up because this man's a brawler. This man, he is something. And I thought he seized control of the fight. And, and then we have that flashpoint moment. I don't know. Maybe I can see a replay of it. But the, the Showtime announcers went crazy for a second. It's, it's like something happened in there that I, I still i am having a hard time processing what happened because it happened so fast. But it's like the announcers, oh, Floyd's in trouble. He's in trouble. He got rocked. And then all of a sudden, Robert Byrd steps in, and I think he saved the day. I'm sorry. I just think he did. And then I don't think I've ever seen a contest flip so dramatically in momentum from Floyd's in trouble until Floyd saved momentarily by the referee. Floyd regroups. They touch gloves. Remember, Connor, that, that was the moment, if I'm processing quick, myself quickly enough here, that was the moment where they're touching gloves and Connor's so anxious to try to put him away that he threw too quickly. And Mayweather smiled for a second like, come on, you're better than that. And, and then Floyd really reached down for something and attacked and it's the first time I've ever seen Floyd attack in his whole career. And he came forward and he smelled blood in the water because he knew Connor had given him his best shot. And then all of a sudden he starts throwing wild shots. I mean, it was so out of character for Floyd. I've never seen him like that. I've never seen him swing and miss so much. And I've never seen him just haymake just throw wild swing from the heels kind of punches. And he caught Connor with a couple of big right hands near the end of round nine, which led to round 10. So the tables turned, the tide turned, the momentum switched wildly in that pivotal round nine. Again, it's crazy that I predicted a ninth round knockout for Connor and my man, Shannon Sharp on Undisputed, 9.30 to noon Eastern Time, predicted the ninth round knockout for Floyd. And, and it was almost this way, and then it went wildly the other way, and it was very close to being the other way, and Connor barely stood. And then it wasn't that he was getting hurt. Again, a little mouse under the one eye. No cuts. No, no problems. Completely composed after the fight. I think he didn't hydrate well enough, and he wasn't ready to go that far. And they were right. Senior and junior were right about that, strategy-wise. He just needed more seasoning, more conditioning seasoning, to be able to withstand the pressure of 10 rounds. Once you get to double digits, he was pretty shot. And again... I would love to have seen if, if he could have just hung on, it would have required some dancing and some clutching and grabbing. But if he could have survived, if, if Robert Byrd had let it go 
until the 11th round. I would love to have seen if he could have mustered something up because now you got a chance. You, you actually have a chance maybe to win the fight, although, you know, judges-wise, I guess that's probably crazy, but he would just have to have to land a, a punch. But knowing this guy, it had potential. And my biggest takeaway was I am shocked. I am pleasantly shocked by how well Conor McGregor boxed Floyd Mayweather Jr. I got my money's worth. I paid my whatever it was, 100 bucks. I hope you got your money's worth because what Conor McGregor pulled off was, to me, I know I don't usually believe in moral victories, but he was up against such long odds. I think it was a moral victory for Conor McGregor. I was impressed. I was proud of him. I don't think they can sell a rematch. I, I mean, I don't know. If, if you told me Conor McGregor was in shape, like conditioned to go 12 rounds, it would be interesting. I don't know. Maybe they'll try. I have no idea. But I am satisfied at this moment, going on now an hour after the fight, in what I saw. I think Conor McGregor proved a lot to a lot of people. I think a lot of people say kudos. And yet, in the end, my final, final takeaway is Floyd Mayweather showed me a whole lot tonight. He showed me a chin. I know he's had one. I know Cotto got him. Shane got him. He's taken some shots before, but he took a bunch of shots tonight. Trust me, he's feeling it right now. But in the end, he showed me a lot. He showed me guts, showed me heart, showed me courage, showed me that he had the ability to break out of his mold of all that defensive mumbo-jumbo, that hide-and-go-seek that just turned me so off to his fights. He finally said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come forward. I'm going to attack. And Floyd, if you're listening, I loved it. It was great. It was fun to watch. I was highly entertained. That was a battle. That was a contest. And Floyd won it. Floyd had to go win it as opposed to backing into it. I was afraid it'd be the classic back into 12 rounds. Just a lot of hunt and pack and run, 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 duck and run, duck and run. F Floyd showed me a lot. He took a lot of punishment tonight. And in the end, he gave a lot. I wish the fight hadn't been stopped. I wish Conor had had one more shot in the 11th round. Probably wouldn't amount to much. But again, I had it five rounds to five rounds. And again, congratulations also to the moral victor, to Conor McGregor. You can stand proud, man, tonight. Again, I'm not a big McGregor fan. I'm not Irish. I just thought he could figure out how to beat this guy. And for a long time tonight, especially through eight rounds and early in nine, I thought he had cracked the code. Wow. Even I, as, as much as I thought he had a shot, I didn't see that coming. And I still want to know why Robert Byrd broke up whatever happened over there in the corner early in round nine. Something happened. Floyd was in trouble. And Robert Byrd, trying to protect his sport, the sport of boxing, pulled Connor out of there and didn't let him finish what he had just started, which was, it looked to me like going to be the end of the fight and the end of Floyd and 49-1. and one. He pulled him out, and then to Floyd's credit, he reached down and he took back over the fight. But something went on in that corner that disturbs me, and I cannot wait to talk to Shannon Sharp about it on Monday morning. I can't wait to talk to you, Shane Mosley, who told me that Floyd was going to laugh. Most of the laughing was done through the first, I don't know, five rounds by Conor McGregor. He's putting his hands behind his back. He's making faces. He's doing a lot of Floyd stuff to Floyd. And then he just he got tired. Way to go, Floyd. You and Senior. And by the way, I bet Senior, I think it was, 
I, the, the odds at the time we bet was for five, five and a half to one. So we bet a suit on it. I don't know how we got to a suit. He, I don't think he needs a suit, but I owe Floyd Sr. a suit, especially for his game plan. I told him I'll buy him a suit wherever. I'll write him a check. I'll send him a check. He was great on Undisputed twice, both in studio and in Las Vegas. I owe you, Floyd Sr. You pulled it off, and it was your strategy, your rope-a-dope strategy that paid off in the end, in round number 10. So I owe you a suit. You, you call it. I don't know what's the most expensive suit in Las Vegas. Whatever you want it, you got it. I will write you a check. But I, I got a lot to say on Monday morning to Shannon and to Shane and to all those people who said Conor McGregor was a clown, a joke, a farce. I think not. I think we saw not tonight. I think we saw a battle that Floyd Mayweather reached down and won with a little help from his friend Robert Byrd, the Las Vegas referee. So on Floyd's turf, with his judges and his referee, quote-unquote, Las Vegas' own, they saved him. They, they pulled him out of harm's way because this, this could have gotten ugly. It had 49-1 and one written all over it. But Floyd survived, and I think he was very happy to survive. And he did it with a flourish. Way to go, Floyd. You attacked. You actually were the aggressor for the last five rounds of this fight. You earned a lot of respect from me. And so did you, Conor McGregor. Way to go, both of you. I'm, I'm proud of both of you. And I cannot wait for Monday morning at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 in Los Angeles, at that studio, not too far down from where I'm standing right now, the Fox studio, Pico and Avenue of the Stars. I'll be there. I'll be ready. I'll have bells on, man. As in, saved by the bell, Floyd Mayweather Jr. I can't wait to hear what Shannon Sharpweather has to say about that. We'll also be talking a whole lot of Cowboys and Julian Edelman, but mostly we'll be talking Floyd Mayweather. It's not may or may not weather tonight. He was Mayweather. He brought it, but so did Conor McGregor. I hope all you watching right now enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm highly satisfied by what I saw. How about you? I'll see you soon.